In this lesson, we're going to be learning about compound inequalities. So you'll learn how to write and graph compound inequalities, solve compound inequalities, and use compound inequalities to solve real-life problems. A compound inequality is an inequality formed by joining two inequalities with the word and or the word or. Now, in math, and means both things or all things need to be true, and or means uh, at least one needs to be true. So... Those are the definitions of or and and. So if you look over here, the graph of a compound inequality with and is the intersection of the graphs of the inequalities. The graph shows the numbers that are solutions of both inequalities. So if we have x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than 5, and then their graphs, we see that they share this portion. So 2 is less than or equal to x is equivalent to x is greater than or equal to 2, and x is less than 5, we can actually combine the and statements uh, into a compound inequality that looks like this. 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 5. And that just means that the values that are in between 2 and 5, including 2, not in two, including 5, uh, are the solution set of this compound inequality. Over on the right, we see the graph of a compound inequality with or is the union of the graphs of the inequalities. The graph shows the numbers that are solutions of either inequality. So here we have y is less than or equal to negative 2, and we have y is greater than 1. So the or statement basically just means uh, if it's a solution of one of them, then it's a solution of this or statement. So y is less than or equal to negative 2, or y is greater than 1. And this is the graph right here. Write a sentence as an inequality. Graph each inequality. So for part A, a number x is greater than negative 8 and less than or equal to 4. So I'm just going to write that down right here. So I know x is greater than negative 8 and x is less than or equal to 4. So here's my and statement. I know that my x value is larger than negative 8, but I know that it is also the maximum value for my x range is 4. So the way that I actually would want to write this is I see that my greater than statement, I can flip this around and rewrite this like negative 8 is less than x. These are equivalent right here, this one and this one. Okay, But I can use this same x right here and just rewrite this as x is less than or equal to 4. So I can just write less than or equal to 4. And this right here shows me that I can write these two and uh, inequalities as one compound inequality. So now to graph this one, I would make my number line. And when you're graphing compound inequalities, I typically only put two numbers. If you can, if you can put more than that, that's great. But uh, the reason I pick two is because uh, sometimes we'll have numbers that are in different ranges. So I'm just going to put two here. So I'm just going to put my two values. So here's negative eight, and here's four, and Right here, the uh, between the negative 8 and the x, th this is not equal to, so this is going to be an open circle. And then right here, this is equal to, so it can be 4, so it's going to be a closed circle filled in. And then I just want all the values in between these, all the values that are larger than negative 8, which would go this way, and then, but I, I, I can't have them be larger than negative 4, so it it's going to stop at negative 4. So my graph is going to look like this. So that is how we can solve, so that is how we can write and graph an inequality for part A. So I just moved my uh, part A solution right here. Uh, so we have space for part B. For part B, we have a number y is at most 0 or at least 2. So if we think of this, I'm going to write the first one. y is at most 0. So the largest value y can be is 0. So that is going to be y is less than or equal to 0 because y can't be any more than 0. Or we have y is at least 2. So that means that 2 is the smallest value it can be. And this is an or statement, which means only one of them needs to be true. So for or statements, you, we just leave it as or. If we look back over here for part A, uh, for our and statements, Almost every time, we can combine them into an inequality that looks like this. Um, and if there's nothing written here, it's assumed to be an and statement. But over here, for an or statement, we just leave it as or. So there's nothing else I can do to combine this. So now I just want to graph. 
I have my two values, 0 and 2. So what, right here, y is less than or equal to 0. I'm going to fill in my circle. And I want the values below 0. So that's going to be to the left. And then over here, I have y is greater than or equal to 2. So I want my values above 2, including 2. So I'm going to have a closed circle again and have my arrow go to the right. So this is how to graph uh, our or compound inequality. And now we're done. Solve each inequality, graph each solution. Whenever we are solving compound inequalities and canceling something out, whatever operation we are doing in one section, I'm not going to say side anymore because there's more than two, in one section of the inequality, we need to do it on all of the other sections of that inequality in order to keep that inequality true. So for instance, if I break this up into the section on the left, the section on the middle, and the section on the right, if I did an operation in the middle, I have to do it both on the right and on the left as well. And that is to maintain uh, the fact that we are dealing with a true statement here. So I'm going to erase these. And now I want to see where my x is. Well, I have x minus 2. To cancel out this minus 2 from the x, I need to add 2. And you guys should be writing this example down. So I need to add 2. But if I add 2 to the middle section, I need to add 2 on all of the other sections here. So I'm going to add 2 here and add 2. This way, uh, I maintain a true uh, compound inequality. So now, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Bring down my inequality symbol. And then the negative 2 and the positive 2 cancel. So I get x. Then I get 3 plus 2, which is 5. And now I want to graph this compound inequality. If there's nothing written here, no word, and, or, or, we assume it to be an and statement. So this means I want all the values that are in between negative 2 and 5, um, not including either negative 2 and 5. So I'm going to draw my number line. So I have negative 2 here. I have 5 here. And then I'm just going to have open circles. I want all the values whoops, that are in between negative 2 and 5, not including negative 2 and 5. Uh, one way to check this is to maybe pick a value in between here. I know that 0 is in between negative 2 and 5. Um, is 0 larger than negative 2? Yes. Is 0 smaller than 5? Yes. So I know that's in my solution set. I know that is consistent with my graph. So we are done with part A. Part B, we want to see what's happening to our x in the middle. And I see that we have another term here, which is the plus 1. And then I have a coefficient of negative 2. So first thing I'm going to do is to cancel out this plus 1 by subtracting it on both sides. All sides, I should say. All sections. So anyway, I get negative 4 is less than negative 2x is less than or equal to 8. Okay, so now the next step, I see that I have a negative 2 being multiplied by x. So to cancel that out, I can divide by negative 2 or multiply by negative 1 half. Either way, same thing. But here is where it gets slightly interesting. If I divide by negative 2 in the middle, I need to divide it both on the right and on the left. But whenever I divide by a negative number, multiply or divide by a negative number, I need to flip the inequality symbols. That's true for compound inequalities as well. I need to flip both of these inequality symbols. So now I get positive 2, and then this less than becomes a greater than. And then right here, I just get x. And then this less than or equal to becomes a greater than or equal to. And then I have negative 4. Typically, we like to have our um, compound inequalities written with less than symbols. So what I like to do is I like to flip this entire compound inequality and rewrite it as um, negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. So that's, how I'm, that's what I'm going to do right now. Just rewrite this inequality using less than symbols. So negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. And if you notice, these are basically saying the exact same thing. But you almost always see uh, the less than or less than or equal to symbols for common inequalities. Anyway, the last thing that we want to do is graph. I'll just erase this right here. So I draw my number line. And I have negative 4. I have a 2. And I'm going to fill in my circle here to show that negative 4 can be a value. And then this is going to be an empty circle right here to show that 2 cannot be a value. And this is my solution set. Any solution in this range of numbers in between 
four, negative four and two, not including two, um, will work. So once again, I know zero's uh, in this solution set, so I'll just try this. I know that zero is larger than negative four, so that's true, and I know that zero is smaller than two, so uh, zero is in this, and I know that that works. So we are done with this one as well. Electrical devices should operate effectively within a specific temperature range. Outside the operating temperature range, the device may fail. Write and solve a compound inequality that represents the possible operating temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit of the smartphone. Part B. Describe one situation in which the surrounding temperature could be below the operating range and one that could be above. Okay. So there's multiple ways you can do this. What you could do is you could just convert these temperatures to uh, degrees Fahrenheit using this formula. F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. So that's one way you could do it. But since it says write and solve a compound inequality, let's uh, write a compound inequality that we can solve. Okay, So the Celsius temperature um, equation is C equals 5 ninths parentheses F minus 32. So we can use this to help us write a solvable in a compound inequality, given our information here. So I'm going to start in terms of degrees Celsius, and then we can use this formula to solve for Fahrenheit. Okay. So I know that my operating temperature is from 0 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius, and these will work, so I'm going to include these values. So in order to write a compound inequality like this, well, I, I know I want my temperature to be larger or equal to um, 0 degrees Celsius and smaller or equal to 35. So that's going to be... 0 is less than or equal to my degrees Celsius, and that's going to be less than or equal to 35 degrees Celsius, okay? But we want our, if you look up here, we want our degrees to be in Fahrenheit. So I can change this C right here. I know Celsius degrees is the exact same thing as 5 ninths times parentheses F minus 32, so I'm just going to change that. So 0 is less than or equal to... 5 ninths F minus 32 is less than or equal to 35. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space over here. So now the next thing I want to do is just solve for F. Okay. Well, I have 5 ninths is being multiplied by this entire thing. I could distribute this, but um, what I'm going to do is just multiply every single section of this compound inequality by the reciprocal of 5 ninths, which is 9 fifths. So I'll do that right here. I'll, maybe I'll do that in a different color. So we'll do times 9 fifths on each section. The zero is just going to say the same, so that's zero. is less than or equal to uh, this 9 fifths and this 5 ninths cancel, so I just get F minus 32 is less than or equal to here, I see that the 5 and the 35 are going to cross-cancel. You could put a 1 here if you want. You don't need one if you don't want one. This is going to become a 7. So 7 times 9 is 63. So now I get 0 is less than or equal to F minus 32 is less than or equal to 63. And the last step would be to just add 32 on both sides. And I get 32 is less than or equal to F is less than or equal to 95. Okay, so this is the operating temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and now once again, you could have done this in multiple different ways. Whatever way you did is most likely fine, uh, but this is just one of the many ways you could do that. Anyway, if we look back up at part B, it says describe one situation uh, where basically your phone could be or device could be below this temperature and above this temperature. So I can think of a couple very quickly. So a situation where uh, your device could be below 32 degrees is maybe if you're outside for a while. And then if if your device is above 95 degrees, either you're outside in a really hot day and or you maybe you leave your phone in a car or something on a hot day and it gets above 95 degrees. Um, so either way, those are some possibilities. But this is our common inequality. And uh, although I didn't write our situation um, for below 32 or above 95, we did discuss it. And you could write that down if you wanted to. But anyway, now we're done.